Now that we've verified that we have a version of the JDK installed, let's write a simple program. Like I mentioned before, you can use any text editor, and I'll be using text edit, which can be found again in your Applications folder or just by searching for it. And I'll click on this to open a new text edit document. And to get the correct format, the first thing I need to do is make sure I have the simplest plain text settings. So I'll click on text edit and preferences. And in this window, I want to make sure I have two specific settings. The first is that I want my format to be plain text instead of rich text. The second is that I want to make sure that I uncheck this box for smart quotes. By choosing plain text and no smart quotes, I'm making sure that this text won't have any special characters. For example, smart quotes will create special left-leaning and right-leaning quotes that our Java compiler won't be able to understand. It can only understand the normal straight up and down quote character. So now that we have these two settings, plain text and no smart quotes, let's open a new document by clicking File, New. So here's our new plain text document, and it looks a little simpler already. Here I've written a simple Hello World program that contains the code that will print out the string Hello World. And I'll provide this code in the notes so that you can copy and paste this into your own text document and you don't have to write it all yourself. The first thing I have is a comment, which is text that won't be executed. And in Java, single line comments start with this double slash. Then you see the words public class hello world. And a class in Java is just a way to contain functions and code and refer to our program. And this class is called hello world with a capital H and a capital W, all one word. Then inside these curly braces is a main function. It says public static void main. And this main function is where our computer will go to read and actually execute code. And we'll learn more about both classes and this main function later. So don't worry if you don't understand all of this right now. Just know that the code inside our main function will be executed by our computer when we run our hello world program. And inside our main function, there's this print code, which should look familiar. It's a println statement that prints out hello world. And notice that these quotes are just two straight up and down lines. They're not tilted one way or the other. Now to compile and actually run this code, we first have to save this text as a Java file. It's important that our file have the same name as our class, hello world, all one word with a capital H and capital W. And this .java extension lets our computer know that this is a Java file. And I'm just gonna save this on my desktop so it's easy to find, then click save. And there's our Java file on our desktop. Then to compile and run this code, we have to go back to our terminal window. And if you've closed it, don't worry. Just open it up again by searching for it or going through your applications and opening it. Now I need to tell my computer to find my Java file, and I need to navigate to the directory that I've saved it in. Since I've saved it on my desktop, I'm going to say cd desktop and press enter. And cd just means change directory, so now we're in the right spot. The next thing we need to do is to compile our code. And to do that, we type in the name of our compiler, Java C, then a space, and the name of our program, hello world.java, and press enter. If this compilation step is successful, our terminal will just move to another line. If you get any errors at this step, it's most likely because your format is not in plain text or accidentally includes smart quotes or maybe your file name doesn't match your class name. So if you get an error, check on those potential sources. And once our code compiles successfully, our last step is to execute our code. We do this by typing in Java to let our computer know that this is a Java program, and then the name of our compiled program, which is just hello world, and press enter. And we should see the expected print output right below, hello world. And we can run this code multiple times just by typing Java, hello world. But if we want to change anything, like what prints out, we have to go back to our text file and change our code. So let's go back and change our print line so that it prints out hello Java instead of hello world. So I'm just going to change this word to Java. And then save it. Then let's go back to our terminal window and try running our program again. But wait a second, it still printed out hello world. And that's because even for small changes, like changing the print output in our Java file, the whole file has to be compiled again before it will reflect the changes. 
so we have to compile again by typing java c hello world.java. And you may have actually noticed this hello world.class file here. And this is actually the code that our compiler creates. It takes our Java file and turns it into a .class file. So now we've compiled our most recent code, let's run it again by saying java hello world and enter. And this time it reflects our change and says hello java. So you can see that writing code in a text editor and then compiling and running it separately in the terminal can get kind of tedious, especially when you want to change anything in the code. And to make it easier to organize and write code, we'll be downloading an integrated development environment, also known as an IDE. Development environments often include Java compilers, so this will make it easier to write and run our code in the same application. There are a number of environments that help programmers code in Java, and we'll be using one called IntelliJ.